Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here with another review for Queen Sugar. Typically, I do my reviews for Queen Sugar on Tuesday nights, the night the show airs, because I have a separate show, our kind of people that I do on Wednesday, but... Um, I found that last night's episode of Queen Sugar season six, episode six, or maybe just stay there, uh, was such a meaty episode. I wanted to come in and, um, you know, fresh and not exhausted so that I could give you guys a really good review before we get started. Uh, I would love to have you get, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on this video um, and also subscribe to my channel if you are interested in detailed reviews. Um, that's pretty much what I do over here. I'm getting away from a lot of um, reality TV. I've pulled out of that altogether and um, celebrity gossip and that type of thing. Um, it just, you know, it's not for me. So uh, mostly we do TV movie reviews over here. Um, so yeah, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel if you're into that type of thing. And definitely if you're into detailed reviews because that's what I do. All right. So um, let's first read our list of titles. I have decided that every episode I'm going to read um, the full list of titles because as um, my girl, My Twisted Life of Poetry and TV um, turned us on to, she thinks that it's a poem and I'm pretty sure she's right because <laughs> it reads like a poem. So let's just read it. Um, if you could enter their dreaming episode one and dream with them deeply. You would come back differently to a different day, moving so easily through that common depth or maybe just stay there. And having read that, I want to say that I full, I'm still 110% standing by my theory that this season is a dream. Um, a dream sequence or a, a fantasy synopsis, however you want to say it, because our characters, uh, do seem so disjointed and not as invested. And we're not getting a lot of input uh, from those storylines that we were tracking from, um, season one up until now, a lot of those stories we're not even discussing. And I just refuse to believe that Ava DuVernay and her writers have just decided to ignore those storylines and are just not revisiting them. Like it's such an intelligently written show um, that garners viewers who are um, logical, critical thinkers they would not dare insult our intelligence. I just refuse to believe that, you know? So this is, it's gotta be a catch to this season. And I stand by that. But, um, let me not digress too much. Digress too much. Um, we're going to open this with Charlie. Um, and as you guys know, if you've been here before, you know, I go, um, character groups by character groups. So Vi in Hollywood, um, Billy and Prosper, Micah, Charlie, Nova, Ra, and Darla, as opposed to scene by scene. Um, so Charlie opens our scene and she's having like a sexy FaceTime with Davis. And um, they're just talking back and forth. And she reiterates that she is not 100% um, convinced that she wants to run for Louisiana State Office. And... Um, she and Davis have several conversations throughout this episode where they not only talk about their relationship, but the challenges of commuting back and forth from Los Angeles to, or from California to Louisiana. 
in order to make this relationship work. Um, they obviously have this affection for one another. She's obviously all in and, and he seems like he's all in too. Uh, you know, they've told each other that they love each other, even though they had this horrific past and, uh, some pretty horrible things <laughs> happened on Davis's end to cause the relationship, the demise of the relationship. But Charlie has this season, she seems convinced, she's convinced us that she's forgotten all of that. She's gotten past all of that. And Davis is, has spent this season convincing us that he's not the person that we um, knew him to be in season one and season two. Um, she even has conversations with Nova and um, Aunt Vi at a girl's spa day where um, they talk to her, they tell her that she's sprung, you know, she's clearly, clearly sprung about Davis because she is like, Davis did this and David did the cutest thing. And Davis always says, and I love the way Davis chews his lettuce. And, um, the David, one of David's earlobes is longer than the other. It's the cutest little thing I've ever did. You know, she's just like puppy love smitten, you know, over this guy. And, uh, Everyone is just like, Charlie, <laughs> humiliated you and had some, had a child on you, Tia, and had something to do with the gang assault of this woman, which you then went and paid off so that she would go away. Like it's a lot to, to choke down. Um, for us as subscribers, and it would be a lot to choke down if I was Charlie, but this is what we're getting this season. We also don't get a lot of conversation, um, from Charlie about the land, um, about the Landry's and that whole thing, Parker. I mean, we're not being reminded. We're not being, um, you know, positioned for this storyline to return. And, um, so it's odd, although I did see in the preview that, um, Tom Landry is supposed to show up at some point this season. So yeah, it's just odd. Um, but we do get two of the most powerful scenes. I think we've seen this season two um, from Charlie and it is reminiscent of season one and season two of, of, uh, Queen Sugar. And the reason why, one of the reasons why we fell in love with this show, because the dialogue is so textured and rich. So we do get two really, really great scenes from Charlie. Although we have not had much of a storyline or conversation or energy or activity or input from the Charlie, uh, Borderline Davis character this entire season. Uh, I'm just to be clear about that. She was a pit bull, a go getter, she was uh, all in, uh, no holes bar, kick the door down type Charlie this whole time. And we get to this season and she's almost dead in the water in terms of um, an effective storyline. I digress. Um, we get to see where she learns from the party leader who um, was trying to position her for Louisiana uh, state office. And he tells her he saw the Gail King interview and how she was able to spin it, the likability that from the comments uh, that she received. Although Charlie came back and said, you know, uh, her perception was that people were attacking her relationship with Davis. But now this gentleman is saying um, she had so much likability with the comments um, that were left about the interview that they want her not to run for Louisiana state office, but to run for United States Congress. And Charlie is taken aback. She's flattered. And this is something else she has to consider. Now she talks to Davis, but she doesn't mention this. Uh, she goes to see Micah. And when she goes to see Micah, she asks him what his thought process on it. Of course, he's proud of her. He uh, thinks she's going to be a part of the squad, you know, the girl squad um, that has AOC and a number of other people. Um, oh, o 
Omar Eli I can't never say it. But anyway, that squad. And uh super, super excited about it, you know, for her. He she wants to know how he would feel about it because they would be in the hot spotlight once again. And um she's just trying to juggle love and her her ambition you know dare she dream and and is her love for davis going to affect be affected by her wanting to take this ambitious step to to um congress it's like she's forgetting about her family obligations the reason why she bought the meal the reason why she fought and bulldogged her way uh through with the landry's um, and how they were trying to, to literally run a railroad, <laughs> railroad through their land. You know, I mean, it was a highway, but you get what I'm saying. Um, but you know, her conversation about whether to take the, to take on that role or not has a lot more to do with, uh, her relationship with Davis as opposed to her obligations to her family. It's, it's a little off putting for me. I just, I, I don't, I don't. I don't know what we're supposed to do with this, Charlie. I'm not sure. It's almost like they're writing her off. How they're presenting the Charlie character to me is very similar how to how they baby stepped us into the fact that blue was the blue that we know was no longer going to be on this show. Just saying. Let's jump right into Micah then. Micah is hanging a lot out a lot with um, Isaiah. Um, and they're going to the movies. They're buddy, buddy, buddies. It, it, they're actually getting to know each other. Um, and it, they've become quite close and Micah is, you know, first to admit that they even, um, while playing uh, spades in the dorms with this guy, who's like a homophobic heckler, um, just complete being completely, inappropriate and, and, uh, microaggressive. Um, it looks like people think that Isaiah is gay or they know that Isaiah is gay. They're projecting that onto Micah and their, their friendship. Micah uh, comes at it in this really angry way. Whereas Isaiah appears to be, um, more experienced and he handles the guy quite differently, just embarrasses him, shuts him down, like jones him out the whole nine. And it turns from this really tense moment to a, a much more lighter moment because of Isaiah's, um, experience as to how to handle this type of, uh, discrimination, these types of microaggressions. So it's a good moment, but it also speaks to the fact that Michael was willing to fight for, um, Isaiah on, I, on Isaiah's behalf, you know, for Isaiah's honesty. Right. Um, we also see, like I said, Charlie visits Micah and, um, he tells her about how, you know, she asks him, how are you doing? Are you taking care of yourself? She was like, he was like, I'm fine. And plus I got somebody here to take that takes good care of me. I was like, is it me? Or does Micah not know that he is either gay, or bisexual or queer? Does he not know? Is he not sure? Because I'm not going to say it but I'm thinking it, but he doesn't seem to know for sure. <laughs> he doesn't seem to realize that he's talking about, um, Isaiah kind of like his mom is talking about Davis in this kind of starry eyed, um, you know, rose colored glasses kind of way, just kind of dreamy puppy lovish. It's that's how it's coming across. But he does fluctuate in that because he is very concise and clear about um, why he likes um, Isaiah and what makes him such a good buddy that um, he's understanding. And, and they talk about everything, a, a whole plethora of things and how that's something that he enjoys in the relationship. Charlie says, Hey, why don't you invite him to, to dinner? Oh, Isaiah would really love that. He would really, really love that. I was just like, dude, you're dating. Isaiah. 
<laughs> you're dating Isaiah. You don't know. You have no idea that you're dating Isaiah. He tells Charlie that he thinks he's gay um, or queer, which I thought was odd because you don't hear people say queer a lot. Um, people rarely jump to the queue, right? This just like you, you, you don't hear people talk about the A a lot or, or the I a lot. You get a lot of the G, a lot of the L, a lot of the B, uh, and we're getting quite a bit of the T right now. But very rarely do people bring up the Q. So it was odd that he would bring up the Q. So I said to myself, hmm, they're going to straddle the fence with this issue when it comes to Micah. Instead of him coming out as gay, he's probably going to come out as bisexual and or queer. You know, he might be the A. I don't know, but he's not going to um, sign on to the G, in my opinion. I think they're prepping us for him to either be the B or the Q. Just saying, y'all tell me what y'all think. Put it down below. But um, he talks about how people have had a couple of things to say about Isaiah and the fact that they're close and he doesn't understand that. You know, why? what's, too, what's so wrong about two guys being close? Who cares if Isaiah is queer or if he himself is queer? And Charlie's like, I mean, are, are you or? You know what? Let me just tell you this. She says, I love you and I support you no matter what. And in what I consider to be one of Charlie, Bord Charlie D Bordelon Davis's more powerful scenes, um, she talks to her son about the hate that people give. And it was a, a, an excellent scene. She does it twice in this episode, once with Billy, which we're going to talk about. But in this scene with Micah, she says, uh, Micah, haters come in all forms. It's not just that you got the job they wanted, a fancy house, a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Some people just can't take you in because your spirit is free. Come on, come on, come on. And they wonder, who are you to be truly free when they aren't? Hold on to real relationships, she said. Hold on to the real relationships and don't let anyone talk you out of those real relationships. Talk against those real relationships, right? Very, very powerful scene. Very, very powerful scene. Again, it just made me feel like, where is Charlie going? She's, 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 it feels to me like she's signing out, signing off. You know what I mean? It's, it's a farewell speech. She's bidding adieu. But y'all tell me what y'all think. Y'all put it down below. Um, Hollywood and Vi. Hollywood is getting Gabriel's hair cut down at the real spot. He learns from the barber that the sheriffs have been in there looking for Ralph Angel because they want to question him about his friend Theo, whom they have arrested and put in jail. Okay. I'm still side-eyeing Theo. I'm still side-eyeing Dominic. Like I'm no new friends, <laughs> no new friends, no new friends. So, um, he immediately calls Ralph Angel and sitting down in that leather chair, um, it, at the real spot, I, I thought Hollywood came across so confident and handsome and executive and, and just authoritative. Oh, he was so cute. So so, so handsome. I really, really just like that scene. And uh, he calls Ra to task and he tells him, uh, you brought this guy in here. You, and that also brought the heat in here. How do they know that this is where they can find Theo? I can vouch for you, but I'm not vouching for Theo at all. And I don't want him up in here. I did a job for him. This is what Ra says. What kind of job, Ra? Is this, is Theo being arrested going to blow back on you? Are you going to get caught up in this some type of way? Ra was like, nah, nah, I got it handled. Hollywood takes Gabriel back to the motel and uh, Celine is sitting out there on the stoop smoking. 
And when she stands up and leans on the uh, the stoop post, she is looking at Ralph um, at Hollywood in the car like. I mean, she's she's giving us fever. She's giving us a brooding, a brooding face like. Luscious. He looks so good. I mean, she was emoting, emoting this, this sex appeal. I mean, she was trying to send all the pheromones, <laughs> all the pheromones Hollywood's way. At first he stays in the car when Gabriel gets out and hugs his mom and she sends him upstairs to get washed up and he stays in the car. When Gabriel runs upstairs, Hollywood gets out of the car. I was like, what are you doing, Hollywood? <laughs> you drop, boop, 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 dip, dip. <laughs> See y'all later. And you pull off. Why are you getting out of this car? And she walks right up to him. Um, Hollywood, uh, as a character, gave me the impression that he was uncomfortable with how close she was into his face, into his face as well. And so he turns in when she's, she's like, you're such a good man, Hollywood. And I just love the way you take care of my little boy. And you, I wish I had a man as good as you. Like, I mean, she was, she wasn't saying those words, but you can, the energy, the energy was saying, um, I, I notice you, I notice how fine you are and it's giving me everything that I need. So immediately he was like, yeah, yeah. Um, is that a bird? Is that a blue bird? Is that a, a blue jay? I don't, you know, he just was like trying to distract and deflect and redirect. And he was like, well, anyway, let me let you go. When he goes to hug her, why are you hugging her? <laughs> why are you hugging her? She just gave you this vibe in this inappropriate vibe. Why are you hugging her? Hollywood? Like, and when he comes out of the hug, she goes to kiss him. And he said, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. What was I thinking? He was like, why would you do that to, 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 to Vi? You got somebody on your side. You got a good person on your side. And that's Vi. And she don't deserve this. She takes off and runs upstairs. Hollywood goes straight home and straight to Vi and tells her. Celine tried to kiss me. And, she, and Vi was like, after all I've done for her? Why would she do this to me? Why was she allowed to, you know, she went through like, <laughs> like the stages of mourning. She went through like these stages of anger and accusation. I, after all I've done for her, why would she do this for me? Why were you so close that she could think that she could kiss you? And Hollywood said one of my favorite lines in this episode. He said she leaned in and found herself in a place where she wasn't wanted nor invited. Honey, he, what I tell you, he cleared his name. He said, and hey, you are my number one lollipop. Okay. Okay. If I'm going to eat something sweet like candy, it's going to be you. And Vi knows it's true. Uh, Nova was kidding with her on, on the girl's spa day earlier when she said... Hollywood paint her toes after he finished sucking them. <laughs> I said, that's our man. Daddy is our man. That is something that our man would do. Mm -hmm. He know what we like. Okay. Um, so she tells him to get the pie because they going down to Prosper's house to take this pie. But first they going to make a stop. She going to go by there and give Celine what for, right? But when she get there, Celine is gone checked out and they're worried she doesn't have much money she can't use the credit cards because it's going to be like a locator for her abusive husband her and hollywood both are concerned that she might go back to this husband and i suspect that this is probably what is going to happen and i think this is ultimately how we're going to see the celine character and her husband removed from the um, scenario and we're going to find that Gabriel has to be raised and reared by Hollywood and by Aunt Vi. That's my theory about this whole Celine. I mean, where did she come from and all of this stuff? Like I didn't get it. Um, why they dropped this particular scene in here. 
So I think that's probably what's going to be the end result of it. Um, and when I think about it that way, I, I don't think that the whole season is a dream. I think we're stepping in and out of dreams, you know, and, 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 you know, the things that are reality and tangible are what's going to be left um, at the end of this episode. To I mean, at the end of this season to carry on into season seven. That's that's my ultimate thought process. So. Um, um, so, OK, so let's go to uh, Billy and Prosper. Uh, we have Nurse Nesby there and she's looking just as pretty as ever. And Prosper is showing out for her and giving her 20 reps with, you know, these looks like eight or 10 pound uh, dumbbells that he's lifting. And Billy gets in on it. They're both proud of him. Billy is uh, happy about the fact that her and Prosper have made some progress in their relationship. So uh, she does tell him, let's have one of our infamous daddy daughter dates. I'm going to pick some food up and this just be you and I tonight to spend some time together and have a little nosh. And he says, this is great. So she brings Italian home. They eat it. They have little quips about the bread and he wants to get some wine. At the same time, he gets up to get the wine. Vi and Hollywood basically give half a knock and walk in. Now, this alone should have made Billy feel some type of way. And I feel like uh, it did. Um, Prosper could tell that Billy was feeling a type of way because he was like, oh, I'm sorry. Now, she brought food and dessert. And he knows. And she... He is, oh, I'm sorry, Billy. I forgot that I told Vi to bring a pie over today, right? Hollywood is the one that acknowledges Billy and acknowledges the food on the table. Are we interrupting something here? And and uh, Prosper says, no, nah, no, nah, no, no, it's fine. We're finishing up. And Billy is like, we're finishing up. <laughs> you was just getting wine. We still got tiramisu. And, and, uh, he says, well, why don't y'all stay and, and join us and, and have some pie. And Hollywood is like, no, I think, I think we should skedaddle, you know? And, um, Vi, once again, not acknowledging Billy or Billy's feelings. I mean, she came in on high anyway, because she met with Celine. Um, so she really should have took her behind home and brought that pie some other time, gave Pro Pro Prosper a call and, and brought that pie over the next day or something, especially since she was feeling that type of way coming off of the Celine situation. But she, like I said, she comes in hot and she's being, um, being, she's, to me, she seemed like she's snubbing Billy. When Hollywood says, no, we're not going to stay. Vi is like, are you crazy? We all can enjoy a piece of pie. That's what you do. You make pies. You eat pies all day long. But remember, you own Vi's prize pies and Donna. And, and Billy gets up and she say, you know, well, um, is there a problem, Billy? Well, my dad and I were trying to had spent some time together and uh Vi is just looking at it. She's like, you know what? Prosper says, now Billy, don't do that. Now don't do that. Okay. It's this moment that didn't need to happen. Because once again, you're not taking up for Billy. You're taking up for Vi. Now when you was with Vi, then you was worried about Vi not speaking to you. You was taking up for Billy, but Billy wasn't there to witness that. And she once again is seeing that you're choosing one of the border loans and their feelings over hers. You're siding with them and not acknowledging her feelings. But Billy, do you have an issue? This is Vi. Very aggressive, very aggressive, disrespectful. For you to say you love Prosper and you've known this man as a friend over 35 years and to stand in his house and disrespect his daughter, his relationship with his daughter. You see it, you see it, you see the struggle that they're having and you're perpetuating it. Okay, Dollar come with come to you with an issue. You want to give her resolve and wisdom. Same thing with Charlotte, resolve and wisdom. When it comes to this situation, you're being selfish, Vi. You're being selfish and you're acting um, uh, uh, obtuse. 
like you don't see it, like you don't get it. Like it's not clear to you that you are the proverbial wedge. Billy says, there's not a problem. I'll just go on. It seemed like it is a problem. You got a problem with my pies? Billy said, listen, I'm trying to have dinner with my daddy. I'm trying to build my relationship with my daddy. Okay. And you coming in between it like you came in between my marriage with me and my husband. She should have said piece of husband. And <laughs> Hollywood's like, you know, I ain't got nothing going on with Billy. Hush, hush, hush. Hollywood. <laughs> Billy lets her have it. <clears throat> Billy say, excuse me. I was an 18 year old child that, that had a grown a man force himself on me and try to accost me that I had to fight off. And then I, after he went and spread false lies and rumors, I had to fight off all of y'all believing that is so. The whole time Prosper is looking at her like this is the first time he has heard, ha heard this. This is the first time he's had even the slightest bit of clarity about what her problem would be with him. How? How Prosper? If people are saying these things about your daughter, you would think that if you even didn't confront your daughter about it, you would have gone to Jimmy Dale and been like, I want you to keep your hands off of my daughter. I know you ain't dating my daughter. I don't want you to date my daughter. You a married man, stay away from my daughter. You didn't even have that conversation with, with Jimmy Dale? Really? If you did, you didn't go back to, 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 to Billy and talk to her about it. I'm shocked. I am shocked. We are learning a lot about Prosper. We are learning a lot about Prosper and how he ultimately is coming across real spineless. In my opinion, um, in this season, it is a toss up between Prosper and Vi. <coughs> He acts a dick, she acts a dick. He acts a dick, she acts a dick. That's how it's coming across to me. So I wonder if Prosper and Vi sat down and dragged his daughter together. Billy gets upset and walks off after she drops the ugly truth right there in, in, in front of Vi and cracks both Vi and Prosper's face. And then I think she going to get up and go after her. And Hollywood was like, I think we've done, we're done here. I think we headed on home. Prosper then, because he couldn't reach Nova on the phone, I'm sure, calls uh, Charlie and has Charlie to go look for Billy. Charlie finds Billy in a bar. And this is where we see the second scene, um, powerful scene that comes from Charlie um, board alone Davis character. Okay. Goes in the bar and, um, Billy is in there drinking and she's pretty, you know, buzzed by this point. And, uh, Charlie just tells her, you know, what happens when you let hurt and shame run you out of your own home? People never get to see how hard you fought to survive, to become the woman that you are now. And Billy says, so you know then, so you know, you know. And she said, I know a lot about hurt and shame. I know a lot about um, the fact that you can try to drown it as much as you want to, but eventually it floats back up to the surface. And uh, Billy says, Vi brought it back to the surface for me. And Charlie says, and she was wrong. Billy needed to hear that. She needed someone to side with her to say, you're not crazy. You're right. Vi is out of pocket. 
just that one little bit of concession for an individual can turn their heart from this raging, angry person to a person that is willing to be vulnerable and, 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 and really tell you where they're hurting from, really telling, tell you how they're hurt, right? It's a good moment. It's a good moment. It's a teachable moment. It's an opportunity for us all to learn that it is important to acknowledge each person's pain in in the argument, uh, in the situation. It's not that you're taking sides, but you're being fair. In order to be fair, you have to acknowledge that both persons may may have viable issues. Just as you're acknowledging that both people are wrong for arguing or fighting, you also have to say both people may be coming from this really hurt perspective. Just saying. Because Charlie then says, after she says she was wrong for that, talking about Aunt Vi, she says just, she's just too wrapped up in her own pain and that's her journey. In other words, you're not responsible for your pain and your journey and hers. Release her. Release her, which it could have been done a long time ago when she went to have a conversation with Nova. She could have went to have a conversation with Vi. Why is it easier for you to make up with Nova than it is for you to make up with Vi? It's odd to me. Uh, Charlie says, eventually you'll have to come back here and deal with this um, situation. I was like, what is she supposed to do? Put an article in the paper and says, I did not sleep with Jimmy Dale. Nova knows, Vi knows, and Prosper knows now. Charlie knows. <clears throat> Who else is she clearing it up with? She does need to talk to her daddy about why he didn't support her in this. But who else? She says, um, you are a good mom to two beautiful children. Are they grown? Because she's been gone a while. You're a strong woman, a fierce woman. You're a survivor, but surviving is just, isn't just moving past the pain, but it's how you harness it. Really, really, really good dialogue. Really, really good dialogue. Um, on two occasions from Charlie Bordelon Davis, um, in this episode, let's move on to, uh, Ralph Angel and Darla. They're on their baby moon. And they're relaxing and sharing their feelings. They have a very calm dialogue. And I, I only just noticed it um, when I was watching it last night. I, I was thinking to myself, gosh, it, they're... Their their dialogue is so um, tamed. It's, it's, it's like elevator music. You know what I mean? Um... You, you don't really see a lot, like a lot of laughing out loud or just like jovial conversation. Their, their conversation doesn't have a lot of energy. It, it has depth and impact, but it doesn't have a lot of energy. You know, it doesn't have a lot of life in the commentary. So I just wanted to point that out. Is it just me? Um, like I said, Ralph Angel has gotten the call from Hollywood. So they're back in the, in the hotel the, or the B&B. He's sitting there and he is just despondent looking at the TV, trying to figure out how, if all of this comes down on him, what is he going to do? Um, because remember Ralph Angel did pray that he didn't get caught and he didn't get caught, but he definitely is caught up. Okay. He is definitely caught up. And when Darla sees him, she says, are you okay? And he is like, um, I have something to tell you. He comes clean. He tells her that um, he took the job with Theo and all he had to do was drive. That's all I had to do was drive. He told me all I had to do was drive. And 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 um, I just had so much on me. I didn't know what to do. Now, shout out to Twisted, my Twisted Life of Poetry and TV, because she pointed out the power dynamic between Ralph Angel and Darla. And that is that he doesn't want her to work. He doesn't want her to have, it, it, it just looks like to me, he wants to be her sole provider. And, and it's the, it's not like physical abuse per se, but it is a type of abuse because in the wrong hands, I don't think Ralph Angel is trying to abuse her, but let's say Ralph Angel was like a Jimmy Dale. 
it's a way to keep you from having the money to to get away to have your own life to do your own thing it's a way of like cobbling you and keeping you subjected and under their um thumb so you have to come through them for everything it was a good point i felt like it was a really really good point that she made <clears throat> i don't think that this is where Ralph Angel is coming from, but I can, I, I appreciate the observation. So you guys tell me what you think about that down below. Um, but baby, when I tell you this whole time, Darla has been little Miss Mousy. But when I tell you she calls him to task, she tells him, um, calls him to task about his lying and him overruling her. When she tried to tell him she knew something was wrong, she knew something wasn't right. You made me feel like I was crazy. You made me feel like I was wrong to worry. Like I was out of pocket for questioning how we were doing things financially, for, for worrying about those things, for trying to help mitigate those things. You know, and he says, I'm I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He goes to reach for her arm and back. When I tell you, she pulled that arm away and threw that hand back like, I bet you, if you want it back, you better not reach, reach it over here. Okay, and then there was a knock at the door and they both was like, ooh. And she looks at him and she says, is this how it's going to be? Whoo, I know that cut you deep, Ralph Angel. I know that cut you deep. We're going to be jumping. Huh? We're going to be Bonnie and Clyde. Me, you, and this baby bump. We're going to be on a wild car chase somewhere running from the from the popo, from the 5 -0. What have you cast us into, Ralph Angel? That's how she... <laughs> she looked at him when he got up and walked for that dough. She looked at him and gave him old slow eye roll. I said, darling, come on, come on, come on, come on. Still, she stayed right in here with that volume. <laughs> They have a very, very docile uh, dialogue between the two of them. All right, so we're going to talk about Nova, and then we will be done. Like I said, uh, Nova tells, um, quotes Audrey Lord um, in saying that when they were doing the spa day, that um, self-indulgence, it, it's shouldn't be called self-indulgence it's more like self-preservation like it's not spoiling yourself to be so self, or, or self-indulgent to take care of yourself it's self-preservation when she gets home she continues the self-preservation by letting them know that she sent them the last of, of of her paperwork for them to review um her writings and she is going to be off for the rest of the weekend and she's going to lay down for a delicious little nap i was like girl if i don't know where you coming from child baby i right, when i love a good nap okay and be excited about it like ee, take me a nap. she lays down for a nap next thing she know the diagram uh police kicking in her door now we saw one police officer the whole time this whole season now all of a sudden there's like 25 of them and they all got on masks and hard helmets and bulletproof vests and uh long guns you know uh da -da 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 those kind of guns and you know they kicked her door in basically they're ramshackling her living room they're standing over her in the bed with with guns and as she gets up you know it is meant to confuse you and all of that same thing that was that happened to brianna taylor the, as we go through this the this moment with Nova, it is once again referencing things that we are seeing in current uh, day times as it pertains to police and, and, and their treatment, the unjust treatment of black people. So they condensed it in this scene. Here we have a Breonna Taylor moment. Um, you know, uh, we we had our George Floyd moment with with calvin last season and now we're having um i mean all all we needed you know we're also having the you know 
uh, these paparazzi moments where people are filming constantly now and they're filming the abuse. Not that it changes anything. It just exposes it more. It doesn't change anything because obviously the police are not being held accountable in a lot of these situations. Um, but I mean, all we needed was for somebody to jump in a pickup truck and start chasing Dominic down the street as he jogged and accosted him with a shotgun. Right? Like that would have brought us full circle to all of the highlighted stories that we've, we've been, been, um, that we've experienced over the last couple of years, just the highlighted ones. Right? So they question her and she does the number one thing that I say you should never do. Do not talk to the police. Do not. Don't argue your point. Don't ask them what you're being pulled over for. They want to give you a ticket. Let them give you a ticket. Go on about your business. The goal is to get home. The law is, uh, not the law, but the, your rights are that you have the right to remain silent. You don't have to answer his questions about your income. You don't have to ask his questions about how you afford your home. In my opinion, the things that she was saying about how she afforded her home um, was just another reason for them to try to bring her down a peg or two. They're using that conversation against her, right? To treat further, treat her poorly. Uh, Dominic walks up and he is like, Hey, what's going on? And they're like, back up. And he was like, hold on, let me get my phone. And they were like, ah, ah, we'll shoot you dead. It's this whole escalated moment. It's like, it's so, it's so, it's so messed up that you have to basically, when you see one of them and they say, Hey, let me talk to you. It's like, you might as well always uh, automatically sit down on the ground and put your arms behind your back because what's going to ensue there is we need to immediately humiliate you and degrade you and denigrate you. And, uh, um, to make ourselves feel better, to, to, to give this appearance that we are, we really caught a criminal, a, a raging beast. You can't even reach for your con your phone. Hell, you can barely reach for your ID when they ask for it. Nova gets up and she's like, wait, 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 wait. And they knock her on the ground. They got him down, face down. They got her face down in their face to face, right? Here is another powerful moment in this episode. He tells her, don't talk. Don't uh, give them a reason to try to further usurp authority over you. He looks at her. He says, look at me, look at me, look at me. You're okay. You're okay. We're okay. We're okay, right? That's powerful to me because I think a lot of times, rightfully so, we go zero to 60 or we get so filled up with emotion and rage that that is then used against us as an excuse for why they were afraid, right? And so for him to get her centered in that way, you're okay. You're okay. He helped deescalate it because you got these people around you, these real thugs around you. They have no intentions on deescalating it. They want you to escalate it even slightly so they can have a reason to put their foot on your neck or their knee on your neck to rough you up, to break your jaw, to inject you with animal tranquilizer. Who the hell came up with that law? Who made that okay? I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. They go in and find a quarter of an ounce of parsley. I've never seen any marrow, any bud that, that light green. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> they take her down to jail for that. It's this whole emotional scene where they don't even put her in handcuffs. They just kind of throw her in the car and she puts her hand up to the window and he puts her hand, his hand up to the window. I was like, dramatics. Later on, we see her in the um, interrogation room and she is praying. Lord, cover me. Give me strength and give me clarity. Lord, cover me. And when that police officer came in there for the eighth time, she gave it to him. She told him, she said, you found one fourth ounce uh, of marijuana 
quarter of an ounce of marijuana, which is a misdemeanor in this state. I know you also know that I have a medical uh, card for that marijuana because it was in the same drawer with the marijuana. She says also that um, um, they're using interrogation tax tactics. And this is the kind of stuff that lawsuits are, are built upon. You've been in here eight times. Uh, you haven't charged me with anything. I want to go home and I want to go home now. Release me now. This is the first time we've seen, like I said, season one, season two, season three, Nova, who had a lot of bite, a lot of bite, a lot of teeth when it comes to activism and rights and stuff like that. So she goes out and she thanks the Lord immediately, but also she knows Dominic is there. Dominic is there and um, you've been here this whole time. And he was like, I told you, I got you. How they know where your weed was, Nova? I know they was tearing the house up, but ain't nobody seen you go get that weed out of that drawer, but Dominic. Okay. I mean, he might be a good guy. He sure certainly is a cutie patootie. But hey, did you guys know that he's the 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 uh thanks to one of my subscribers who told me um Nikki and Angela from our kind of people when she went to the jailhouse last week to to see Nikki's dad, the guy who plays Dominic is also the guy who plays Nikki's dad. In our kind of people. So I'm wondering if he's going to be on this show long. Or you know. Maybe he's doing both. I don't know. But yeah. I thought it was an interesting little uh, tidbit. So shout out to my subscriber for that. What do you guys think of this episode? That was the end of this episode. What do you guys think of this episode? Do you think Dominic is the ops? You think he's copacetic? Um do you what do you think is gonna happen to Celine, the whole Celine character and Gabriel scenario? What's gonna happen with that? You get you think that we're seeing the, the last of 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 uh, this Charlie Bordelon, Davis West, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bordelon West Davis, I don't know. Anyway, she got a lot of names and she's looking to add more on to that. Um, what do y'all think about Prosper? Wow. I mean, we've come full circle. We how much we were rooting for Prosper and Prosper's character. Kind of side eye and Prosper now. I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Y'all put it down below. Listen, and until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I holla.